are you considering freelance writing and you want to start but you really don't want to be a beginner for a long time so you want to move from beginner to professional in a short time then this video is for you. Sitting back, I was just wondering and remembering all of the times that I started my freelance career and I thought, oh no, somebody needs this. Now I'm gonna take you through how to start, how to look out and reach out to clients, how to set your rate, and how to build a portfolio that will give you that credibility that will make people decide to work for you. Are you even ready? So this is going to take the form of a tutorial, right? So make sure you watch to the end so that you get all of the scoops. And if this is something that you really, really want to dig into, like this video right now, and then let's go ahead. Starting your freelance journey can be a bit overwhelming, you can be unsure like how are people doing it and you can actually put yourself in a competitive mindset feeling like will i be able to do this because you're looking at people who have gone ahead who are already established so i get that and in this video i'm going to guide you through the essential steps you need to take to kickstart your freelance writing career so grab your notebook yes you heard me right grab your notebook because this is not a video you want to forget anything that you have heard or who is a freelancer i think we should start there who is a freelancer being a freelancer means that you're working for yourself. So it's a type of self-employment. You are working for yourself and you're working for different clients on a short term, on a more like on a project to project basis, right? So you get things done, they, are, they give you something to do, you finish the task and they get paid and you move on to another client. Do you understand what I mean? So it's not like you're working for anybody in particular or you're on anybody's payroll in that sense or you're anybody's staff or you even are running a registered business in that sense so the business entity is yourself a lot of creatives um, do freelancing and of course I get I know you get the idea so you can actually be a freelance writer yes you can write for several clients get paid and move on let's go to understanding the freelance markets number one as a freelance writer you can actually write blog posts several other websites an organization have blogs on their website and sometimes they can outsource to you to write you can um, write articles for magazines articles for websites articles for, for different kind of uses right you can write website content I love this one in particular you can write website content especially if you have some copywriting skill because website content is not supposed to be a lot like the boards it's not supposed to be so detailed it's supposed to be straight to the point and all of that you can also write like technical documents you can also write product labels right descriptive product labels for for brands and for products and services you can write business uh, documents advertisements you know name it there are several aspects of writing that you can actually do and get paid what is majorly key when you come to the freelance market is for you to find your specialty area what people call the, your niche right you can't possibly be writing for, for medical journals and you're writing for fitness brands you're writing for children's literature you know you would not be able to deliver some at the same excellence level as others so it's good to find your sweet spot like where you have the expertise the knowledge and the mental strength to deliver so find your expert area it could be a group of topics or areas so look at it this way like which industry do i want to serve right do i want to serve the fashion industry do i want to serve the engineering building construction industry because there's something as construction writing as well do you want to serve the pharmaceutical medical industry so find your niche that's what i'm saying that's the first place to start you know why this is important a lot of freelancers don't start with finding their niche so they are writing everything so people find it hard to trust them on a specialty level for a long period of time and then they might have given up and think it's not profitable so if you do that at the beginning smart the next thing is that you must ensure that you have built a strong portfolio what's the portfolio a platform that showcases your works previous works where people can read and then take a decision whether they want to hire you i know you're going to say i'm just starting you know nobody has paid me to write good let's get there and your portfolio will showcase should showcase your writing style your tone your skills very importantly then if you want to do it start by writing a few pieces now on this chosen niche that you want to serve so you look at that industry you want to write fashion articles that nobody has paid you to just create a topic write about it you know go out of your way to give it that paparazzi you know make it sweet so that people can read it and we're like wow okay if you wrote this then i think we can give you a try 
You know what I mean? So go ahead and write articles in your passionate and knowledge areas and just use that to like show off, yes, what you can do. Write a lot of articles in your specialty areas. You don't need permission to do that. You don't need anybody to pay you to do that. Just go ahead and write. Now compile them and make sure you have a link to where people can go and read them. And make sure that those writings are not just you being creative and thinking. Make sure you research through them. Information are, that are there are factual. You know, you know all of those bits. And also make sure that they are well written and error free. Make sure that there are no grammatical errors. Make sure that there are no legally implicative things in your writing. That way, you know, you can score the points in every area. Now, the next thing you're going to do when you have sorted your niche and have built a portfolio of your kind of works is build a website. I included this because this is something that is becoming less and less embraced across Africa where I come from. A lot of people are doing more of social media and neglecting their credible online. I, I mean, I don't mean that anybody who has, everybody who has a website is legit or do legit business, but it has a way it gives your business reputation, right? Create a website that showcases your portfolio. So let this portfolio you have created Find, you find a section in your website where people can go and read it up, right? Have a website that talks about your services, that how people can reach you and have your articles and all of that there. It's very important, trust me, because especially if you're looking at serving a global market, very, very important. So you set up the website and host your platform, you know, use a platform like WordPress. It's very easy to, to learn to, to design your own website. Uh, you can also use other content management websites like Wix and all of that, right? I remember when I started my business in 2008, God, I started with Blogger free platform. Like, I created, like, I made my blog look like a website, and that's what I started my business with. And that was how I got my first international client, right? But no, now there are lots of website platforms. You can actually create a cute website, yeah? Make sure that your website has about you, where people can know about you. Make sure it has those writing samples I mentioned and how to contact you, very importantly. If I were you, I will include a blog section. You know, we are coming there. So next thing is have a blog. Start a blog on that your website. See, is your best bet. One way is going to help is that it's going to keep your website ranking high on Google so that people can easily find you. Because blogging is something you have to do frequently, consistently, your website will always come top of mind or top of page when people research your area of business. So you see what I mean? Imagine those your articles. It's easy for you to send somebody your blog article, your, your blog web page, and then they go ahead and read as much as they want. Do you understand? It sells you even faster. So set up a blog. If you're a writer and you want to do freelance writing, you want to go expressing yourself in your sweetest way, having a blog is a no-brainer. You have to start a blog. So that is it about building a strong portfolio. If you have a website, you have a blog, you've written your articles and your specialties and you're still writing with your blog, you're ready to go, okay? Because you and you have also found your niche. Now let's look at how do you go ahead to find clients. Because as a cocoa right, if you do all of this and people just read and go and they're not your ID clients, you will still not feel like you've started business. So let's talk about finding clients because this is the one of the hardest parts of uh, freelance writing or any business at all right finding clients is a cocoa and that's what even determines whether you're going to really do this because your clients are the ones that will pay you it doesn't matter how much skill you have or how you are the best in your industry but if you don't have clients paying you trust me you're going to leave that ambition and move up to something that will pay you because it's about the dough guys it is about the do girl okay, so don't mix it up finding clients is very, is very important and of course i got you okay let's go now one way to get clients or start letting people know what you do is by networking see you have to get out of your way and join platforms on linkedin maybe on facebook where people who need writers can be found and Trust me, that's everywhere. Especially if some of those your specialty articles you've written on your own, you can share some of them on social media, right? And then people follow your writings and it becomes easier for them to say, oh, okay. We need to contract this person to help us write this. Also be bold to use your social media platform, for instance, to talk about your offerings. Networking online is so important. Join groups, attend events where you see podcasts or live videos or webinars. Please pay and join as long as you know that your ideal clients are there. Even in real life, make sure that you can go out of your way 
to meet people. In my early days as a blogger, oh my gosh. And I just redesigned my complimentary card just recently. My early time as a blog, I used to have a t-shirt. I used to have a, a complimentary card or a business card. I used to have all kind of paraphernalia with the name of my blog on it. So you can't even miss it. And it still works. So in real life, get you a t-shirt that has your the name of your brand. So people can say, oh, you're a writer, really? What kind of writing do you do? And then you can discuss. You can even see a fashion writer here. You know what I mean? The best fashion writer you can get whatever fashion tips whatever Make, draw attention to what you do wellness writer you know medical writer then make sure you have your call card so anywhere you go to church events even running around school runs you can hand out your card to people you connect with and you've talked about what you do hand them your card and make sure you get their contact especially if they have shown interest in needing writing very 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 important also online freelance platforms like upwork like fiverr also works i've heard a lot of people making a lot of money from those platforms my god but i know i signed up on those platforms i wasn't so patient to like you know keep checking them every day i have a profile there to go check me out but nah i really don't visit it so i don't want to also discourage you i because i feel like I'm doing a lot of platforms and I wasn't concentrating. So, but I've had a lot of people make a success out of those platforms. And I know you know some people, right? So go ahead and also open your platform or and create your services on those platforms and let's see how it goes. On those platforms, I think usually you need to create an account. You need to set up your portfolio for people to know what you offer. You have to put your rate and then you need to reach out to people who are seeking for your services actively, you know, and stuff like that. There's also one of the platform called Freelancer. Freelancer.com is also a freelancing platform like Upwork and Fiverr. So try uh, try them. Don't give up on any of them. And make sure that you have your social media game is tight as well. So I always advise that you should choose one or at most two social media platforms where you create your authority around what you do. So let me make that number three. So network. Get on the freelance platforms online. Also get your social media game on point. So use your social media to educate people in your industry, to call out brands in your industry and let them know about writing, about communicating in their industry. And then call to action with the fact that they can talk to you and you can provide solutions in that, guys. Did you get the format I used? So use that to educate people in your industry. So if you're a medical writer, call out people in explaining how to write in a way that their clients or their patients can understand better and one way to do that is to get on with your medical practice and contract the writing part to you you get my drift yeah now another way to get clients very important is cold pitching see you don't need to know somebody to tell them this is what i do see get out of your way i did this a lot also i'll get email addresses you know those in my you know that i'm connected to in one way or the other i'll compile them and i'll send bulk emails yeah so there's a number you can send send more than usually if you're using gmail but i did that and make sure that you're not spamming people that is not the kind of email you're going to send and then everybody is seeing every other person's email address mm -mm, no 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 let me tell you what to do pro pro tip when you want to send multiple emails, maybe say to 20 people at the same time, remember you're not going to put an actual name, so you're going to be there, sir or ma'am, the same content. Make sure that you put nobody's email on the toe bar of your email, or where you have to. The, don't, don't put any email address on the toe. Don't put any email address on the CC. Instead, put all the email address, all the 20 email addresses on the BCC bar, right? That way, it will go to each of them discreetly and they will get it like it's only them you're sending to. So many people don't know this, please apply it. Okay, so that's one way to send bulk emails. And I don't mean like 100 emails, 200 emails. Google email will block you. <laughs> okay, don't say that it's me that's told you. Just, you know, that, that kind of bulk of 5, 15, 20, it works. Okay, so what I mean by that is don't be afraid to go out of your way and go to actual companies that you know we need your services go to them tell them what you do if you need to write a fiscal proposal write it introduce yourself and hand it over to them i did this a lot in my earlier days as well even to government parastatals i will go write on my blog letterhead and submit 
So that's called cold pitching. It's cold because you don't know them before, they don't know you before, so that's the first contact. Okay, so many people are afraid. Don't be those kind of creative who are afraid to open new doors. And make sure that your pitch is well written, captivating, attach your portfolio or links to your portfolio so that it's easier for them to make a decision. Okay. You can also do that for online platforms, the online website publications that are actual companies. You can pitch them to be their freelance writer on, you know, certain topics. So it must be that you have researched them, know their needs. Then you can apply to say you want to provide services in this area. Okay. Now, another way you can find clients is, of course, content marketing. So you use your writing skills to create valuable content that will attract potential clients. I've already given you the clue earlier. So writing insightful blog posts will help. Um, writing articles, creating informative videos, that's another one can showcase your expertise and it will attract your kind of clients. People who are looking for your kind of skills can easily say, oh, okay, um, I think I saw this this lady's video or this guy's video or this guy's article and I think we can give him or her a try. So content marketing is so key. Again, we've talked about networking for real, freelance platforms, social media, cold pitching, content marketing. The next will be networking events. Attend the ones that are industry specific. So if you're creating a niche as a fashion writer, make sure that every fashion show, any fashion event, any fashion government establishing, you know, grants for fashion, whatever, what anything that is happening around you in that industry, you are showing up. You are showing up wearing your brand, you're showing up with your call card, you're showing up networking, meeting key people, CEOs of industries, and you must be conscious about it. That is so, so key. That's one way to open doors to people who might not even be looking for you online or have access to you online. So networking events are so key and they are very excellent opportunities to meet potential clients. Trust me. You will also learn new developments in the industry that you've chosen. So that, that way, your content is richer and you're able to establish your presence in the industry. It's more like you make yourself the mouthpiece of the industry. So you communicate, you share the richness of that industry to, to, to a reading audience or to a viewing audience. So they know you as a go-to person to showcase what they are doing. Referrals. This one, my business ran on, my freelancing business ran on this for over seven years. I'm not even kidding you. Referrals. Like, I wouldn't even talk about what I do, which was my editing and and profiling business. I started it. I wasn't really advertising it at a time because I was still working nine to five jobs. So I wasn't advertising it because I didn't want to get overwhelmed with orders or things. But this business was running on its own through referrals. People who I, I edit their book will come back and they refer other people or come back with their second article or their second books. And it was very lucrative, you know, back in the days. And I'm not saying it's not anymore now, right? So referrals will encourage your existing clients, people you're already working with, encourage them to refer others, other people to you. And you can give them something. My company, I have a policy of 10%. 10% of whatever the cost of this person's job that somebody referred, I pay this person. Sometimes they will say, no, 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 I don't need it. They, they won't want to send you your account number and all of that. You can do it through airtime, like, like I do in Nigeria, airtime, or get them a gift that is worth that amount and deliver it to them as a surprise. You get what I mean? But appreciate them. It has a way of making them always remember you whenever they know somebody who, ha who needs your services. Referrals works, guys, it works. Word of mouth referrals are so important. When people say, oh no, I know somebody that can help you do it. Remember, word of mouth is the biggest kind of marketing. So when people trust people and those people they trust, tell them, oh, I have somebody that you should work with. They take it as a law. You know, they don't continue searching. They go just for you on the power of that person's re recommendation. You can even consider offering like a discount because it came from somebody if you don't want to do the other one or you can even do both yeah so so but don't forget to give incentive to your clients who brought the people very important another aspect that you can look at when you are looking for a client is cold emailing yeah and i already gave you the tip right when i was talking about cold pitching right so you can both cold pitching can be you going physically to those events um to those companies and you know writing to them and telling them what you do showing them what you do but this is cold email enough sit down gather email addresses send them in box like i told you 
you will be amazed at the people that will get back to you. So all you have to do is to identify clients who are potentials for your kind of market or company that you like to work with and send them personalized emails or telling them about your services. Make sure your email is professional. Though. Make sure that you, even your email address is well crafted and that your email is very straight to the point and it, sh it really shows the value that you're going to bring to their business, okay? Another way to get clients is through online directories and marketplaces. There are lots of people who have listing companies so they list companies around your vicinity find them online and make sure that your businesses are listed there i know a couple of them that help my business over the period of time i've been doing business here in nigeria i don't know how it works in your country but find out if you search online you're going to find them so if your business is not already on their list because sometimes they get our businesses listed without our knowing is you know it's amazing so if your own is not there then go ahead and reach out to them to add yours yeah so you can list your businesses on your on online directories and marketplaces where there are potential clients that can find you yeah so and there are some platform also like that you can actually go and like be hands if if you're like a, an artist um, or illustrator i think there's also another one called clarity um you know also fiverr and all of ones we've mentioned before are also great ones to use now another way to get clients is by collaborating with other freelancers for instance, I did that a lot also when I started, and that's why I'm giving you the tea. Anything, I can't have a knowledge I won't tell you, okay? What I used to do then, because I was an editor, people would come to me to edit their works. Then they would ask me things like, their work needs illustration, do I not know any illustrator? I'll look for a freelance illustrator. I knew a guy, David. David was such a help for me back in the days. I, that, that was how I contacted David. I got to know him, and then we started working together on, on books. So all, all I do is I look at the aspect of of the work that needs to be illustrated i'll send to him he will illustrate send back to me and i send to the client you know we cost it he'll tell me how much he will charge i'll add my own markup and i pay him off when the clients have accepted the illustration of over a period of time i get paid he gets paid and everybody's happy right so that way i have that with a website designer i have that with an illustrator i have that with printing presses so i could actually go and publish people's works Okay, so don't let anything stop you. Do not let anything stop you. Collaborate with other freelancers. In fact, I used to call them my channel partners, right? Back in the day, yeah. So build relationships like that um, with people that have complementary services. Not people that are offering the same thing you're offering, but people whose services complement what you do. That like it's your own clients will also need something that they do. So col collaborate with them. You make money and they make money. Also make sure that they also send you writing referrals. So because you give them jobs as graphic designers, website designers, illustrators, they should also market you as a writer or as a blogger or as an editor you know what i mean so make sure that you put half that agreement so that they don't say oh i forgot and they only get from you no it should be mutual you know what i mean okay so now another way to get clients is guest blogging look at people who have blog platforms as well and people whose blogs are in the topic that it complements yours or in the same industry like yours and guest blog so write some blog posts that they can post on their platform and and refer back to you backlink your own blog or put your own name as of course as the author that way people know you as an authority in that field as well and can decide to also use if they like your writing style they decide to, to hire you that's the way it works so it's very important and that's why you need the blog it's easier when you have your own blog as well because you might need to also reciprocate yeah whenever you you, you get blog you have to write a bio of yourself at the end of the writing so that way people can click and go to your own blog yeah so next one is ensure that you are prospecting on linkedin people underrate linkedin a lot oh my gosh don't you can use linkedin to connect to potential clients engage with their posts you can join relevant groups linkedin groups you can share your portfolio in fact linkedin has a whole cv first you know so make sure that you maximize that linkedin also has advanced search features you know, and those search features can help you find and connect with clients in specific industries. So you can look at people who are already in your industry and reach out to them. Okay. Another way to find clients is by making sure your website is search engine optimized. It's not okay to just have a website. If it's not, first of all, mobile friendly, it's not SE optimized, 
then your website will be there but it will not rank on google when people are searching for the same thing that you have right optimize your professional website so that search engines can find them easily how do you do that use relevant keywords just go on even on this um on this um, platform learn how to do seo just check out some videos how to do seo on my website you're going to see people have done videos on it learn how to do it and then do it and use relevant keywords Produce quality content, you know, and also make sure that they are content that your potential clients will be seeking. Content that answers the questions on your potential client's mind that will make them to click and, and read your, you know, your blog post on your website. Okay, especially when they are searching for freelance writers, those kind of things that will push them to say, oh, okay, I found one person and I need, I need to reach out to them. Another way you can find clients is by creating email newsletters. Start an email newsletter, you know, when you, immediately you start sharing your writing tips and all that online on your blog, industry insight and updates about your services, make sure that you start creating an email list. It can help you to become top of mind in your, among your network and lead to your, you know, to more people referring you and getting you to, you know, to work for them. Don't also overlook local businesses around you and organizations that might need writing services. Just look around, look at everybody who you know, have a service and a product. They need to communicate the value of what they are selling. So they will need a writer to communicate that. Right? So don't overlook anything. Reach out to them with your portfolio and offer your services. One thing you have to remember is that you have you, you have to use a mixed method of approach. Don't say don't just follow one way. There's nothing like one way in marketing. Don't follow one way. Your clients are various places. Make sure you go to those various places and find them. See, there's some there's a trick in freelancing or entrepreneurship in general. Immediately your source of income is from one place, or you're not sure of the frequency of getting jobs, you get really frustrated. So when you do this reach out, you are able to get attract people from different aspects of both online, offline and all that, which is the beauty of it. Okay. It's important to or that you're also persistent. Don't just give up because they went and they said no. Keep following up with them. Keep making the phone calls to ask what they if they've taken a decision. Because some people will say, oh, I'm going to talk to our board. We're going to have a meeting and decide about it. Don't just go quiet on them. Keep following them up. You're the one looking for something, right? So don't give up because persistent then be professional also don't also start chatting and watering down your brand okay be proactive get there before people even have a need for you let them know that you're, you're always there for them and also make sure that your approach is tailored towards your targeted audience people that can pay you people who will need you do you understand people who can pay for your fees and not your target audience people who don't need your writing and know your target audience don't waste time with them and continue refining your strategies so that each time you can adapt your your marketing to suit the kind of prospect that you're looking at now let's go to the next section which is setting your rates <laughs> this one is another big big one in fact this one is a big tricky because this aspect is the part where a lot of creatives just lose it so <laughs> you don't want to undervalue your work you don't want to do it see so many people have done it it has paid nobody We've done that, gotten the shed and turn it. So don't enter that trap. Don't undervalue your work. Yeah. So but you need to be realistic with your pricing. Now, how do you do that? First of all, check around. Check around what's happening among people offering your kind of writing services and those who are paying them. How much are they transacting? So more like what's happening in your marketplace. Look at what other freelance writers are writing and the niches and what they are charging for those niches, right? Websites like um, Editorial Freelancers Association has given me so much knowledge about this. Just check them out, EFA, Editorial Freelancers Association. They provide guides that will help you create your rates. I've given you one pro tip. Look out for them online or it's really on LinkedIn. You're going to find them. Read up a lot of things they do. They'll give you a guide. So you can now adapt around it. But that's one way. Another way you can create a rate that is very competitive and you're sure that you're not going to shoot yourself on the foot or send people packing is make sure that your rates are hourly or per word. Decide whether you will charge per word or per project. Or hourly this is very important because if not you just be giving a lump sum then by the time you're being paid you discover that oh your enthusiasm and your, um, your motivation just drops because you discover that the work is bigger or more demanding than you actually thought so beginners often start with um, lower rates and then you increase as you gain experience and credibility 
any rate you cannot defend that when they ask you oh why are you charging this amount and then your mouth will start shaking <laughs> you don't need to charge it okay so start from your comfort zone but make sure that it pays you make sure that it makes you happy then as you continue one year into the business two years experience three years experience you increase your fee as you go you get what i mean and also look at your industry yeah so it is your market research that will help you know what you know people in your industry are charging so that you know whether to benchmark higher or lower Another thing we are going to look at very importantly is, which is another segment now, is managing your freelance business. See, and there's a video I made sometime, I'm going to tag it here. A lot of businesses fail before they even start because people don't pay attention to the things you should do before you even start. So that's why I included this segment. Managing your freelance business is so important and these are the things to look out for. Time management, freelancing. It's not just about writing, no. It's about managing your own business. So it's not just about um, I'm, I'm writing and I'm doing it on my comfort zone. This is something I love to do. You have to work with time because people who are outsourcing to you, they have projects. They are using those writings for projects and they have timelines. So you can't be working like, you know, is a, is a business you're doing right now, right? Now, organize your time efficiently. Set aside specific hours that you need for writing, for pitching, looking for new clients, and doing administrative tasks. Administrative tasks like making sure that you document the names of the client that you're working for and your agreed turnaround time for their work and the date they paid you your first deposit and all of that. All of that you have to manage on your own because you're a freelance, you're working alone. You must do the administrative part, do the marketing part. You're the all and all. Okay, so you have to be really organized and mind your time. Another thing to pay attention to as you're managing your business is building relationships. Bad character has made a lot of people not be able to succeed in business. And I'm not saying that you have bad character. I'm just giving you a cue. Because by the time you start serving people, you actually have to serve them. So sometimes your client might be younger than you, older than you, um, not as rich as you, not as... It doesn't matter. As long as somebody is going to pay you and you're going to offer a service, it's a mutual relationship that needs respect to grow, you know, to grow, to mature. And if you want them to become returning clients, you can't just do business anyhow, right? So, building a relationship, especially if you want it to be long term, is important and it can lead to repeat business. So, make sure you always meet deadlines, always make sure that you deliver quality work and make sure you give them advance notice, communicate with them throughout the process, okay? Well, that will be a wrap on this freelancing from beginning to, to pro. Um, like this video if you didn't like it the first time because you've gotten value right now, okay? And make sure you subscribe on your way out. I'll be right here in the comment section waiting for your comments so that I can reply and give you more tips. And of course, make sure you subscribe so that you can find the next video because it will be as useful as this one as well. Until I come your way again, my name is Chisom. See you in my next video. Bye.